Hello friends, welcome back. Today we are going to render conditionally from props. Uh, so far you've seen how to use if, else, and, null, and the ternary operation uh, condition if, uh, expression if true, and expression if false, to make conditional decisions about what to render and when. However, there's one important topic left to discuss that lets you combine any or all of these components with another powerful React feature, props. Using props to conditionally render code is very common with React developers. That is, they use the value of a given prop to automatically make decisions about what to render. In this challenge, you'll set up a, ch a child component to make rendering decisions based on props. You'll also use the ternary operator, but you can see how several of the, of the other concepts that were covered in the last few challenges might be just as useful in this context. Okay, cool. So I'm going to just spread this out so it's really easy to see. Um, and we'll start from here. Okay, so the code editor has two components that are partially defined for you. A parent called ch game of chance. Okay, a parent function called game of chance. That's this guy. And a child called results. And then this other one is called child. I think that we can tell child components because they have super and props, but they don't have state in them. Actually, the way that we tell that is where they're nested. Okay, so first you'll need a simple expression that randomly returns a different value every time it is run. You can use math.random. This method returns a value between 0 and 1 each time it is called. So for 50-50 odds, use math.random is greater than or equal to 0.5 in your expression. Statistically speaking, this expression will return true 50% of the time and false the other 50% of the time. So yeah, I mean, just to go into quick depth here, I'm just pulling up the console. If we go math.random, and we put this in here, it gives us a number of 0.29. If we go again, it'll give us a different number. Okay, and so if we say it's greater than or equal to five, this will give us a true or false randomly. True, true, false, false. This is like a coin coin toss. Okay, so in your expression, statistically speak, um, on line 30, so here we have line 30. Uh, replace the comment with this expression to complete the complete uh, to complete the variable declaration. Okay, so expression becomes equal to math.random there. And so I think if we were to do throw a constant here like this, um, expression is such a weird word to use. False, false, false. Okay, so it's being saved as that, so this doesn't work. But each time that we, ren we run the render thing, our expression is going to be different. And so that's how that works. Um, now you have an expression that you can use to make a randomized decision in the code. Next you need to implement this. Next you need to implement this. Render the results component as a child of game of chance. Okay, so game of chance, and we want to put the results component as a child of it. And so we're going to enter it into here. Um, uh, results. Okay, you can see that the turn moved there, so something happened. In the results component, uh, right, res and pass in the pass in expression as a prop called 5050 pass in expression as a prop okay so our prop is going to be 50 50 and we're going to pass in our expression okay and so now we're passing in the results and in the results we should have access to a prop which is called 50 uh, 50 50 50 50 50 did I spell it wrong okay it's not rendering which means we're probably making some sort of a chance uh, an error in the results component Write a ternary expression to render the text you win or you lose based on 50-50 prop. Um, is this to string? I wonder if we did that, would it make it work? No. Hmm. Okay, so we want to write a... Oh, it's working when it's here. 
So, oh, it, here's what it is. This dot props dot 50, 50. Okay, so right now, this dot props dot 50, 50. So what we're saying is, because we're passing 50, 50 the expression, and the expression is being rendered out as either true or false, we need to make a ternary operator, right? So if 50, 50 is equal to uh, true, then let's render uh, u win. And then, oh wait, we want to have this be a question mark because that's the way that it's structured. Otherwise, we want to say u lose. Okay. You win, you lose. You win, you lose. You notice it's not just toggling. Sometimes you get different ones in a row. Um, this turn thing's not working. So, but this, this does seem to be working. So finally, make sure the handle click method is correctly counting each turn so the user knows how many times they've played. This also serves to let the user know the component has actually updated in case they win or lose twice in a row. Okay, got it. So yeah, here what we're saying is on click, we're saying this dot handle click. Handle click is binded to the game of chance component. So therefore we have access to it via this guy. And what we want to do is set the state in which the counter grows with each uh, time that handle click is called. So ha counter is going to be equal to uh, this dot state dot counter, right? So this dot state dot counter plus one. And now when we add, when we click here, you lose, you lose, but it's showing us that we're playing again. So yeah, I think that this is going to be what they're looking for. And the tests just take a long time in React. All right, and so that's correct. Um, I'm not sure if I could go over this in any greater detail because I think the way that I went through it is was slow enough. Uh, if you guys think that I should be doing this differently if I should go back over it like I have been in the past but um, I'm just gonna say it again okay so we've got a game of chance component and it we're setting a state within it within it, we're also saying that we have got a handle click function which is this handle click function and then we're rendering and when we render each time we are coming up with a constant where the expression is set to a true or false value that's based on math.rand was greater than or equal to five. And so if you see, if we run this into a console, you're gonna see that it's rendering out true, 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 false. It's rendering out a random selection of true or false. It's basically flipping a coin. And so then we're returning, after we set the expression equal to something new, each time we render, we're returning a single div, which has a button, which, has, which is connected to our handle click um, function. And all our handle click does is set the, every time that we click it, it sets the state where the counter, we add one to the counter. Um, and so that's the button right here. It says play again. So that's the button that you can see. It says play again. And then the results is a child component. So for the results, we jump up to here and we've got a results component that ha is, uh, has the prop set up in it. And we're rendering when we render, we call the return function so that we pass in an h1 element with this dot props dot 50, 50. And if it's true, we say you win. And if it's false, we say you lose. It doesn't matter whether it's this one or um, um, whether it's you lose and you win or you win, you lose because it's a 50, 50 thing. So it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, cool. And so we render an h1 with the result and we see that here. So the result 5050 expression is fed into here. And so because expression is changing each time we render, this will be true or false based on whether or not this math random comes out. And so we pass 5050 as the props. And that's why we have to say in here, this dot props dot 5050. And the props are being pulled in from the constructor. And then finally, we're setting a p element in which we have turn is equal to this dot state dot counter um, I mean I think that this could probably be written like this uh, equally as well because turn is equal to this dot state dot counter JSX actually does that um, 
Cool. Yeah, that works too. So that would just be me, me refactoring this down and making it a little bit more simple. And uh, yeah, that's how this runs. Once we're at that point, everything just renders out and we're complete with the program. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy this one and we'll see you in the next lesson.